in this question, we are given a flow chart. So this is the flow chart. We're given the flow chart and we now need to complete the trace table. So how do we go about drawing a flow chart? Or what does a flow chart do firstly? The flow chart helps us to determine the activities, the steps that are taking place uh, in, in the uh, flow chart that is given. It helps us to determine the output. So we want to know and understand what the output is in this flow chart. So to draw the trace table, let's look at the variables. In box number one, I've got count. So you create a column in your in your trace table. You create a column with count or for count. In box one, I've also got a, a, a variable sum. So I create a column for sum as well. Then if I go to box number two, I've got count. I've already got the variable count, so I don't need to write uh, duplicate it. And in box two, I've also got sum. So there's no need to duplicate that as well because sum is on in my trace table. Then in box three, that is a condition. So you always put conditions into your trace table. So count less than 10, that's my condition. And then here, it's a print statement. So print means output. So every trace table will have an output column. So let's follow the boxes and the arrows and let's see what this flowchart is doing. I start at the beginning. OK, so I'm at the start. I then go to box number one. In box number one, count is equal to zero. So let's fill in the value count equal to zero and sum is equal to zero as well. So um, I filled in the values for box one in my trace table. Let's go to box two. Count equals count plus one. So on the right hand side, I've got count plus one. What is the current value of count? Count is currently zero. So zero plus one count will become one. So zero plus one is one, and that value is stored back into count. So that is why I've now put one in the variable count, and the zero is now lost. The next statement, sum, and this should be equal to, right? That's equal to. Sum equals sum plus count. So what's the current value of sum? The current value of sum is zero. Zero plus count, which is one. So zero plus one is one, and that value is stored back into sum. So the zero is now lost. Zero plus one was one, and sum has the value one. I'm finished with box two. Now let's go to box three. Is count less than 10? Well, count is currently one. Is one less than 10? That is true. And if it's true, then you follow the branch that says true. So I'm going to go back to box number two because the flowchart takes me back to that particular box. So count equals count plus one. So what is the current value of count? One, one plus one, count is now going to be two. Sum equals sum. What's the current value of sum? The current value is one. So one plus count, count is two. So one plus two, is three. So sum now has the value three. That's box number two. Box number three, we check is count less than 10. Count is two. Is two less than 10? That's true. So I follow the true branch and I'm back at box number two. So what happens? Uh, you can figure this out now. Count equals count plus one. It's an accumulator. It's adding one to its current value. That's what count is doing. It's adding one to its current value. So what's the current value? The current value is two. And if I add one to it, two plus one is three. And count becomes three. And what is sum doing? Sum is taking its current value and adding the value of count. So it's adding sum plus count. 
it's adding sum and it's adding count and that value is being stored back in the variable sum. So sum is three, count is three, three plus three is six, so sum becomes six. Let's go to box number three. Is count less than 10? Count is three, three less than 10? That's true. If it's true, back to box two. I think we can go a bit faster now. Count equals count plus one, three plus one is four. Sum equals sum plus count. Sum is six, count is four, six plus four is 10. Box three is count less than 10, count is four, four less than 10. That's true. Back to box two, count equals count plus one. That's five. Sum equals sum plus count. Sum is 10, count is five, 10 plus five is 15. Box three is count less than 10, five less than 10. True, as long as it's true, I'm back at box two. And count equals count plus one. That becomes five plus one, it's now six. Sum equals sum plus count. Sum is 15, 15 and six is 21. And box three, count less than 10 is six less than 10. True. Back to box two, count equals count plus one, seven. Sum equals sum plus count, 21 plus seven is 28. Box three is count less than 10, count is now seven, is seven less than 10? True, I'm back at box two, count equals count plus one, eight, seven plus one is eight. Sum equals sum plus count, 28 plus eight, gives me 36 and is eight less than 10? That is true, that happened at box number three. As long as it's true, I'm back at box two. That's my repetition. Count equals count plus one. Eight plus one is nine. Sum equals sum plus count. 36 plus nine is 45. Box three is nine less than 10. Still true, back to box two, count equals count plus one, nine plus one is 10, sum equals sum plus count, 45 plus 10 is 55. Is count less than 10, is 10 less than 10? And we know that 10 is equal to 10, it's not less than 10, so that's false. And because that's false, I now follow the branch, that is false. And that takes me to my print statement, which is the output. So there's a message. The message is the sum of the numbers is, and it's printing sum. So what's the value of sum? There it is here. The value of sum is 55 and after that I then come to the stop and that ends my trace table for this particular flowchart. So you have to be careful when you're tracing through this and follow the branches the way the flowchart is behaving. Even if you think the flowchart is doing something wrong, you still follow and do whatever the flowchart is requesting us to do.